Welcome to the Greener Way podcast, a show about people, planet, and purpose, and how investors and corporate leaders push forward in a complex world. Shalini Samuel is the Director of Certification in Standards Learning at B Lab Australia and New Zealand. B Lab is the global organization that oversees the B Corp certification movement, and B Corp is an independent global standard which identifies businesses and organizations with sustainable and ethical practices. And they began their work before greenwashing was even a thing. So Shalini, welcome to The Greener Way. Um, if I could start off, uh, could you provide a little bit more information beyond my very brief intro on what a B Corp is and how how do B Corps meet the challenge of profit with purpose? Sure. Thanks, Rachel. Thank you so much for having me on the podcast. So I suppose to begin with, B Lab sort of comes from the premise that a different kind of economy is not only possible, but necessary, and that business can lead the way. And that's where, that, that's where it's always started. And the B stands for benefit for all. And certified B Corps are companies that are verified to meet high standards of social and environmental performance, accountability, and transparency. And for a business to certify as a B Corp, it needs to demonstrate positive impact on all its stakeholders. And this is done through B Lab's free and publicly available impact assessment tool. Now, B Corps need to hit a minimum of 80 points and submit to a rigorous third party verification process. Now, BLAB is the nonprofit behind B Corp certification, which, as you've um, indicated, is a globally recognized standard and movement of business as a force for good and made up of over 6,200 businesses globally, including over 500 in Australia and Aotearoa, New Zealand. We develop the B Impact Standards, verify companies' performance against the standards, advance legislation for stakeholder governance, and support business to continuously improve their impact. B Lab started in 2006 by building some of the basic market infrastructure that entrepreneurs and investors said that they needed to succeed. And this included performance standards, a legal framework for stakeholder governance, and a unifying brand. Now, currently, B Corps range from household brands to venture backed disruptors to multi billion dollar businesses. And you'll find B Corps across 89 countries and 159 industries, from technology to textiles, energy to education, and food to finance, all aiming to lead the way as pioneering businesses that com combine this purpose with profit. I think one of the things that's always fascinated me about B Corp's Shalini is mm. um, the fact that you've created a global standard that really is accessible from, you know, very small enterprises. You know, I've mentioned in previous conversations that a very dear friend who runs a swim, a sustainable swimwear manufacturing line um, is undergoing considerations of B Corp certification all the way up to really large global entities. And it's sort of the flexibility and accessibility that's always fascinated me about this process, as well as the rigor and the transparency. So how does B Corp go about that process of assisting companies who want to demonstrate and continuously improve those practices? Yeah, great question. I um, I think I'd answer that by actually saying the actual assessment um, consists of five impact areas. So five impact areas that companies really sort of answer questions and answer selections and select answer selections about. And these are scored questions. And the impact areas are governance, workers, community, environment, and customers. So going quite beyond the E and ESG, for example. And by delving into each of these impact areas, it aims to give companies this holistic sense of their impact on stakeholders. So just by simply completing the assessment, a company gets that holistic um, sort of experience. In addition to these areas where a company's positive impact is captured, there are also a set of questions that are unscored but are designed to assess risk and set a baseline for eligibility for certification. It's probably also worth noting for organizations interested in seeking B Corp certification that the assessment both incorporates and can be mapped to other standards and frameworks. So during um, a certification process, other product level certifications like Fair Trade or Rainforest Forest Alliance or um, other product level certifications an organization might carry are really tested for their credibility to determine whether they can earn credit towards B Corp certification. So Shalini, the thing that I've always appreciated about B Corp um, is that they were on top of greenwashing before it was a thing. How do you respond uh, to that global movement for authentic and rigorous transparent processes, policies, disclosure, um, particularly for a financial services industry that is needing to respond to these demands to, by internal and external stakeholders? 
So as you know, our global head of standards and insights mentioned recently on an episode of B-Lab's Forces for Good podcast, it can be really difficult to tell the difference between a business that might be talking a lot about purpose and impact and one that's truly embedding it into the practices of the organization. And what gives me hope is that some of the characteristics that you've pointed out that really define certification from B-Lab's perspective, are that accountability, transparency, rigor, rigor, and continuous improvement. And these building blocks coupled with that keen eye on stakeholder impact and outcomes, and that's really crucial, have really set the certification up to serve as that point of difference in this world of greenwashing or rainbow washing or even purpose washing. And like many organizations out to serve a public good, B-Lab really wants to see companies put action before communication so that their communications, in fact, inform people accurately. And these communications then shape this continuous and improved actions and create a virtuous cycle in the process. So B Corp certification assesses companies on their journey of both positive and negative impact, requiring transparency when it comes to negative impacts. And the holistic nature of the assessment tool means that companies using the tool are challenging themselves to not just highlight what they do really well in one area of the business over here, but to also take stock and align internally on goals to improve across a myriad of areas of the business, and then to bring those improvements to the table at each three-year recertification time. Term. And in an environment where mm. misleading communications are becoming a greater risk, organizations are really starting to see that as an opportunity to validate their approach. And what we've heard from investors and other financial services firms in particular is where they may have feared that it's not all that it's cracked up to be. Um, more often than not, they've been pleasantly surprised at the rigor of the process and the insights it brings both internally and externally. I, actually, again, that's something that's really fascinating to me. Um, you know, I'll frequently interview organizations when they announce their B Corp certification. Um, and the co most common comment I've always heard is that, you know, we thought we had, you know, a holistic, top, you know, well-integrated process, but we found we could push even more deeply and become even more interconnected. And I think, you know, even going so far as I think there's a there's a requirement to change the constitution of the of the entity in order to attain B Corp status as well, Shalini. Am I am I correct in that? That is correct, yes. And you know, we've had investors actually tell us that building that commitment to stakeholder governance in their highest governing documents has really led to a pos positive kind of cascading effect within the organization. And it's a really invaluable way of an, in aligning internally and also making a statement um, to the rest of the world that that's how they would like to see themselves operate moving forward. So what does the future look like, Shalini? Um, it feels as though, you know, people at the leading edge in terms of uh, profit for purpose and sustainability are always seeking for what that next best practice is going to be. Uh, how are the standards evolving and who's participating in that process? So the growth that we're experiencing in demand for B Corp certification isn't slowing down at all. And we kind of recognize that in a world where social and environmental crises are coming to a head, this certification that goes beyond buzzwords to really credit companies that are working to undo those destructive practices within their industries is just going to keep increasing in relevance. So it doesn't really mean that we can hang back and watch it happen. And we've kind of come to realize that. And so like B Corp's, B Lab needs to continuously improve as well. And a good set of standards underpinning any certification must evolve. And B Lab's global standards management team is currently coordinating a series of internal and external consultations with a multitude of stakeholders, um, globally, in fact, to reshape the standards. And for anyone who might be interested in this process and how they can weigh in, please do head to our global website and get started. There's plenty of information there. And for a shot of inspiration, if you'd like to immerse yourself in the different ways that B Corps currently go beyond business as usual and kind of set an example for what's possible within their industries, we've also got a month-long campaign to showcase B Corps globally that's coming up in March. So do look out for that as well. Oh, fantastic. We'll have to touch base in March then, Shalini. I, <laughs> yes. I, I will confess I'm on the, I have gone to the B Corp website to read up on some of your case studies to understand a little bit more profoundly how B Corp accreditation works and what it can mean for organizations. So there's a wealth of resources there. Um, so Shalini, as we finish up our time together, um, what are the top three things that are interesting you for, for 2023 when it comes to working with the stakeholders in, in Australia, New Zealand, New Zealand's B Lab process? Yeah, great. Uh, another question that is really live in my mind. Um, localizing our global standards is a is probably the top thing that's really on my mind. 
Um, so ensuring that um, our standards are fit for purpose, what does it look like for an organization, a Maori organization seeking B Corp certification? Are our standards fit for purpose? What does it look like for, you know, the largest of largest investors um, doing the same? So continuously, continuously sort of keeping the eye, an eye on the ball of our, the way our legislative landscape is changing, the other standards and frameworks coming into, the, into play and all of that. So that's probably the first thing. And the second thing is to continue to ensure that despite the fact that we're a small non-profit ultimately that is servicing sort of large um, for-profit organizations as well as medium and SMEs, um, to continuously ensure that we provide a level of servicing and experience that actually does speak to what the movement is actually about, that, that you know everything about the inclusivity of the movement kind of keeps shining through. And also um, really upping our game um, through our standards on risk mitigation and risk management. So we've got a like a big part of the new um, standards that are coming in relate to um, re relate to kind of being a little bit more clear with the market on how we assess risk and how we define risk, particularly for companies that carry controversy when they come through the door. Ooh, I'll be very I'll be very interested to continue this conversation as you start to examine those questions and come up with solutions. As Shalini Samuels, the Director of Certification and Standards Learning at B Lab Australia and Aotearoa New Zealand, thank you so much for your time today. Pleasure. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks for listening to the Greener Way podcast. If you like today's show, remember to rate and review us on your podcast platform and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss an episode. Any feedback? Contact us on podcast at fssustainability.com.au. I'm Rachel Allen Backus. The Greener Way podcast is a product of FS Sustainability, a show about people, the planet, and investing in our collective future. All information in this podcast is for education and entertainment purposes only. The Greener Way podcast gives listeners access to information and educational content provided by discussing numerous financial sustainable options and our featured guests. It is not intended as a substitute for professional, legal or tax advice. The hosts of The Greener Way are not financial professionals and are not aware of your personal financial circumstances. FS Sustainability operates under an Australian Financial Service License and the exemption made available under the Corporations Act 2001 in respect to any information or advice given. Before making any financial decisions, you should read the product disclosure statement and if necessary, consult a licensed financial professional. For more information, head to the disclaimer page on the FS Sustainability website, fssustainability.com.au.